Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for your blessing, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Turn with me to Luke 16. Uh, let's read verse, uh, Luke 18, verse 24. It says, And Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Will you remember that verse? Then go to 16. Are you in Luke 16? Okay. Now, verse 10. It says, Then he who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. And he who is unrighteous in a very little thing is also unrighteous in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the use of unrighteous wealth, who will entrust the true riches to you? And if you have not been faithful in the use of that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? All right? And no servant can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Amen. Amen. Right. I wonder if I'm talking to the right people. Yeah. Really? <laughs> okay. Oh, I should change my message. Okay. I just want to share briefly about um, uh, true riches, Amen. the anointing. Amen. Now, I, I just came from visiting one of uh, the buildings that we built, and, um, and uh, I noticed how it has, it has decayed, you know, over the short period that it was built. So, I just realized the truth of God's word, that all these physical things are really a waste of time, honestly. I mean, apart from what you really need, everything else that you are doing is, is, is just a waste, of, it's a waste of time, you know, honestly. You know, and, and that's why I sense with myself God leading me to, you know, spend and invest more in spiritual things, no matter how expensive they are. Things like books and uh, reaching out to crusades. You know, because when you go and do a crusade and come, you, you spend $10,000, $20,000. It just it disappears, evaporates. You have, you, there's nothing to see. All the money that you've spent. You understand? When you go on a television and preach in one, one hour or 30 minutes, you spend millions of CDs. $1,000, $2,000, $3,000. Just, just evaporates within the 30 minutes. It's all gone. You know, so I just realized how useless all these buildings are. And how utterly futile. You know, every physical um, creation and accomplishment is it's useless, you know. So, you know, it's so important to recognize the worthlessness of um, earthly and physical things so that you now begin to value, you know, something else. And that's what Jesus is talking about here, about who will give you the true riches. In other words, dollars and pounds and CDs are not true riches. Okay. It's not true wealth. Yeah. You are not really wealthy if you have those things. But you are impressive to some few people around for a short while. You understand? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's really nice to arrive somewhere in a nice car. Sometimes when I'm going to preach at certain places, I always call some of my 
people who have nice cars and say, look, I need your nice car to go somewhere. So come and drive me there. So that when I get there, I feel that, yeah, I'm a man of God, you know. So there are some people in town who think I have, somebody was telling me, your white car, your this car, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I've just been using people's cars. I don't drive people's cars, but I just enjoy them. Amen. Amen. So, I, I, I realize that, you know, you can impress people, but you're just impressing a few people. Yeah. It's like impressing people in school. When we were in school, there were some boys who used to bring their, I mean, there are a lot of things that people are impressed about in school, which are useless. Yeah. Is it not true? Useless things. It's like that's what is impressive. And people are so impressed with those things. Do you understand? But you don't have to be impressed with uh, unimpressive things. God is trying to shift your focus to as actually appreciate what true riches are. Amen. All right? How many want true riches? Stand to your feet. I want you to pray for God to give you the perception of what true riches are and to help you to value it and head towards it. Because even a minister does not naturally go towards bearing true fruits. It's not easy for us to see. Just speak to God for a moment. Ask God to give you a true perception of, real perception of, a perception of real and true riches. Father, we thank you for these wonderful, great riches. In Jesus' name, amen. Sit down. Now, you'll find out that people who have, even pastors, it's not easy for us to see what is true riches? Pastors. How much more ordinary members? Do you understand? It has taken a supernatural revelation of God to direct me away from buildings, which is a good thing, you know, to have. But when you see the decay, Right before your eyes. I mean, I can't imagine how this place would be like when we leave it. Because the places that I walk and I go to all the time, they, they are always kept in a certain way. But the places I don't go to, they just decay. When I come, I'm so shocked at what has become of the place. So, 
It, it really is a revelation of how worthless all physical accomplishments are. Isn't it? So that, that thing must be in you. You must, you must believe it. You must understand it. Look, there's real riches and there's riches which are not riches. And so when you are in school, you impress some people. When we were in school, people were impressed with so many things, isn't it? Got a boyfriend, got a girlfriend, you're doing this, you've done that, you slept with this person. We were in school, people used to go out and do things and come and tell us, we did, I did this, I did this. They used to look at that girl, she cannot walk because of what we did to her. So you see her walking here and so on. I mean, it's, 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 these were the accomplishments of. Huh? These are the accomplishments. But now you go out of it and you realize that it's foolishness. And then you, you, you now begin to wish you hadn't done some of those things. You know, the, 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 that boy was my boyfriend and this was my brother. Now you, you walk through the church and you keep meeting people you've slept with before. You, so hi, so hello. <laughs> then you act as if you don't know them and you keep moving on. It's not so easy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. So, but these true riches, the first step to getting them is to see them, to recognize them, and then to devalue Riches that are not riches. In your own eyes, you must, they, must, they must devalue. It's very important. Not, not for your level, though. For, for my level. For every level. It's a revelation. When you get it, you will search for anointing. You see, that's why we have pastors or trainee pastors who want to pass exams, but they don't want anointing. Because you don't know what is valuable. Yeah. If you have anointing, you know, exam passing will not be mm. what is really. It, the, the, your pursuit of the anointing will let you do all the things that need, are needed to pass exams anyway. Okay, now, there are three keys here to get this precious anointing. And I, that's what I'm sharing with you. This precious riches that are true riches. Okay? Are you there? Yeah. Right. Now, the first thing is, and I'm preaching for just 10 minutes and we close. Faithful in a very little thing is faithful in much. Right? So the first thing is to be faithful in little things. So, much is the anointing. Now, God is using your behavior uh, with little things to decide whether to give you the anointing. Is, is watching your behavior when it comes to little things. Okay? To decide whether to give you anointing. It, it's actually supposed to be a guide for a leader. When you want to put somebody in authority, a position, you say, you know, just remember, he that is faithful in little things, is faithful in much. So watch the people who are faithful in now, now I'm telling you this message from this God's idea is that he is assessing your behavior with little things to decide whether to give you the anointing. You understand? Then the second key, after I've almost finished preaching because I have only three keys. The second key is that he's assessing 
your behavior hmm, with what? He, he who is faithful in the use of unrighteous wealth is assessing your, it's not, it's not, he's using what you do with money to decide about the anointing. And then the third is, the third one is, if you have been faithful in that, the use of that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? So he is using your behavior in relation to somebody else to decide to give you your own anointing. So you, you never knew that this was how you were being marked. This is how you are being marked to, for decisions for anointing, which are the true riches. So God is, mark, is using these three skills to, make, to take decisions. Just like we use this, you know, if I put somebody in charge of a church, it's able to do a church, so can I send the person as a missionary? The person was faithful with, you know, when I put him in charge of the university church, he was able to do this, so he's good, let me turn him here. And somebody was able to be an elder in this, or somebody was able to be a vicar, just a vicar. Yeah. You know, if you can be a vicar in this place, it also shows that you can, you know, we use that to take decisions. Yeah. I use that to take decisions. When somebody tells me lies, you know, or even tells me that he told somebody a lie for me, you understand, and so on. You all, you all those things, you, 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 you use them, little things, all right? So all I want to tell you today is that God told me what he was using to decide whether to give me anointing. And each time, you know, when Rick Joyner received the torch in the vision that he had, he put the torch into the water. The water was the people. So the torch was his calling and his movement that he had been called to start, and he applied it to the water, and the water caught fire. What are the people? So it's like he received the call, then he applied the call to real life and to people. You know? So he said, oh. Then the eagle said to him, I was there when you put the torch in the water five years ago. He said, what? It was just at about a few minutes ago when I put it. He said, oh, no, no, no. It was five years before you put it in the water. So it's like you received the call and took five years, even before you applied the calling to the people. Then the eagle said, and I, I was there, I've been there at different times when you have received different gifts. Different gifts that have been given to you. So what I realized that on, in the course of your life and ministry, you keep receiving gifts. Different gifts keep being given to you. I mean, why not? There's nothing that says you are given a gift once. Uh -huh. In the anointing, you are anointed several times. Do you see? So you, as you go on, you keep getting another gift. So sometimes God says, let me give you a gift. You know, and I'm somebody who has experienced that. You know, you have a gift, and then you, you are given another gift. You apply it, and then another gift, and another gift, and you keep going further. Do you see? So now God is showing how he decides whether to give you the true riches. It's by certain things that he expects you to do with these three areas we can talk for a week. So I don't know which, which of the three to take. Which one should I talk about? The little things, that which is another man's, or money. I should talk about money, you see. Okay. It's one of the most basic, based on your decision, I'm going to talk about the money part just a bit. And then we close. In your walk with God, Gifts will be given to you based on what God tells you to do with money and whether you do it or not.
Yeah, if, if he says to you with money, do this, and you do it, he uses that to decide to give you anointing with money. Yeah, That's according to the Bible. Because you are faithful with, faithful means that you, you were reliable, compliant, obedient, reliable, responsible, and did what you were expected to do with money at every stage of life. He uses that to decide to give you anointing. That's why money is often connected to anointing. Money is often connected to anointing. <laughs> money is often connected to anointing. We, 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 we can start a long train here. I give you a few points and then we go downstairs. Tithing. You don't pay tithes. God looks at how you are able to pay tithes to decide whether to anoint you. Because he himself said, if you are faithful with unrighteous wealth, I mean, what is not true riches? You'll be faithful when he gives you anointing. So he's not going to give somebody who is not faithful with this. He's going to give the real anointing. When the real anointing, you will not be faithful with it. You'll misuse it. That's why most of us are not anointed. Because it's a very heavy responsibility. So tithes. I, I have always believed that tithing is one of the, I mean, it's a basic something that God looks at to decide whether to continue with the next basic step. So that's why there are pastors who don't pay tithes. And there are quite a few pastors who don't pay tithes that I am aware of. It's one of the most basic, and you, you, can, you can see yeah, because it, it is the, it is, it is the, it is the, it is, it is his, it, it, money is not wealth. It is not wealth. It, it's even called unrighteous wealth. Unrighteous mammon. It, and so who gave you true riches? True riches. Money. It's not true riches. Then there must that means there are riches and there are false riches and there are true. Riches which are deceptive. That's why in the final quest, people went to heaven and thought they were great, whatever. Off. Because the impressive buildings are not a sign of God's work. That's why I almost didn't build a Kodesh. And it was just a year ago, of just last year, we started. Because building of buildings. It went out of me some time ago. Do you understand? And I, I've tried to keep that place as simple as possible. I don't know if it's simple, but I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. Do you understand? Even the simple one has not been easy. I've tried to make it so simple. I tried. No windows, just put these wooden things there. Just paint it white and then go. Hey. Because hmm. it's not true accomplishment in terms of heaven. I have built buildings, church buildings. I leave it, I take my eye off. I don't go and chase it for just a few months. When I go, I want to vomit. I want to vomit. At the place like this, like villagers have invaded the place. And I've just demolitized the whole place. And that's why I don't believe in making fountains and all these kind of make a fountain. It will not work. It will there will be water in it. I don't know why in Ghana we, we bother to make such things. We said they make a fountain. And then the found the motor will not work. The water will be black. The fish will die. The whatever, all oh, La Palm Hotel. You see, they have chalets with the fountain. The fountain doesn't work. All the, fa- the fountains are not working. And the tech architects are always designing with fountains. This is all the only thing they know a fountain, fountain. But you, you don't just design, you design based on how it will practically be after two years or three years. The motor will not work. The fish will die. The water will become black. The golf course, they made, they, they've never had water. 
But because they all golf course have water, they wanted to make some place with water. Now they have gone to make a place. And when they made, I said, this place, this will be a source of breeding for mosquitoes. And it has truly become a green and black, whatever, which is, I mean, a very, very bad health hazard. And I mean, because we cannot do such things. It's pathetic. Anyway, back to my message. So, God uses tithes to decide to anoint you. Then, he uses offerings. I have, listen, don't write notes. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't write notes. The things, okay, tithes, offerings, gifts, this, this, that, that is the notes. Listen to what I'm saying. It's very related to receiving spiritual gifts. It's what he tells you if you are faithful, reliable, and obedient, and compliant with this thing. So he is like, God will come, and then he will give you, look, give me some bread from downstairs. Take some of the, some crust in a plate. Yeah, just a plate of croissant, that's all, something, bring to me. Perhaps I can illustrate it to you. Now it's offerings. Maybe they are giving an offering, and he tells you, give, give 100,000, give 1 million. He uses your obedience and compliance with that to decide to give you anointing. I, I believe that. Every step of my life, spiritually, has often been related to some particular something that has to do with finances. I'm preaching one of my best messages. It's true, Pastor Silas. He tell you, do this, you do that. It's related to Certain gifts. You don't do it because in the, uh, this, this one you will not do. What I'm about to show you has little value. Waiting on you. So he tells you to pay tithes. So tithing, I me, mean, I pay tithes. See, I have in my house a, a place where I pay my tithes. I don't, I don't pay tithes in the church. But when I get somebody will give me a gift, hundred dollars, no, just a plate on a plate. Okay, okay, okay. Now this is what I have. God has given me yeah. this. Now he's working with me and says, give one to, give one of these to Reverend Saki, Bishop Saki. I said, mm. he looks rich. Mm. <laughs> and I have only three, one, two, three. And if I give him one, I'll be left with only two. Common sense should tell me that I shouldn't give him because I haven't eaten today. And I don't know where I'm going to get food so the end of the day. So, so, so God is standing. Come, big daddy, you be God. You stand here. Give, give, give me some oil. Do you have oil? He's standing there with his oil. And he's giving instructions what to do with my and righteous mammon. And what I do with this is going to determine whether I can handle the truth. And that's what he's going to use to decide whether to give him the truth. So he's standing there with his big bottle of oil. Telling me, give 10% of this every month. I say, no, I'll put 5% in. How can you be anointed? Do you know that it takes an anointing to be in charge of God's money? 
Because right now, if I, if I want to steal uh, millions of dollars, I could. Yeah. Not even steal or, or just direct it to myself. I just uh, pay me. Assignment. Pay me this. Do this for me. Do this for me. Get this for me. This for me. That for me. They are all, there is nothing that I don't qualify for in the church. Because not only am I the bishop, but I'm a founding bishop. Or the founding bishop. And I'm a chief executive. Not only, I'm not only a pastor of here, but of international churches. And, and somebody said to me one time, you don't have to be paid uh, here only. You have to be paid a percentage from all your churches. Don't laugh. Why, why not? It's my fruit. A husband man is first, is first partaker of the fruit. I'm, I'm worthy of it, if you don't know. I'm worthy, I'm worthy to receive fruit from America. I went to suffer in America to start a church. It's not easy to start a church there. And in London, I went to start a church there myself. You understand? I was 30 years old when I walked into that town. And I've done so many things there. And in Switzerland, I stayed there and started a church and lived there. And all over the places where they started church, I sent them there. So I'm worthy to have reapings from all these places. So when I say, don't laugh and say, oh, wow. Okay. So now, he has the oil. And he has just asked me, I came to pray. I came to pray and I, I was praying. And uh, when I prayed, he said to me that I should give. I should give. One of my whatever. <laughs> what is this? What is this? What is this? Should I exchange this for anointing? Exchange huh? for anointing. And it's like I'm struggling with this. It's a problem. No way. So I come back to him. I'm praying. Are you disappointed? Oh, I'm surprised. You're surprised. <laughs> He's surprised. He I get a real gift. <laughs> now he tells me to give a gift. Offerings. Special offerings. Because then as a man robbed God, tight and offerings. Not just tight and offerings. So God says, give this, give that, give your house, give your car, give your land. My land, my land, look at how it is weak. My land, you see how useless it is. <laughs> this is a real gift. Do you know, do you know the people who work for, I have 11 medical doctors who work for me. Medical. I have six lawyers who work for me. Bankers. People of high, people travel from Atlanta to come to Ghana to come and work for me in Kolegono. And Nottingham and London and all over. They come to here to work for nothing. And they leave their high jobs and their hospitals to come and do whatever I tell them. It's not money. The people who type for me, they are qualified to be in charge of banks. It's not, it's not, it's, it's more than money. Yeah. Yesterday when I was going home, people on every, every Tuesday, Sunday, they sleep here. Till I'm going, then they rise from the dead when they see that I'm coming. And they surround me. They love me. Do you think it is, money cannot buy that. If you don't know, if you don't know, it is, it is an honor for somebody to be even interested in you. Some of you don't have even friends. Even friends, you don't have friends. God says, give. 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 Oh, okay, God.
It's precious. I want to keep it close. I, I like it. I, I don't want to give it up. Then he tells you, he tells you, uh, what does he tell you? So I see your pastor's life. Galatians 6 6. Then you start. Mm. My pastor is rich. He has more money than I have. What's he going to do with this? What has he done for me? Last year we gave. I'm, I don't owe him anything. Am I supposed to say, say thank you till I die? Yes. One thing that you have done for me. Thank God. I've said thank you. I've acknowledged. I've given offering before. Am I supposed to say thank you till the day that I die? Why? Yes. <laughs> you know? Mercy. You see, <laughs> it's one of the most spiritual things you can ever do. To sow a seed in your pastor's life. And I'm very happy that we instituted Galatians 6.6. Yeah. Yeah. Because you may never know. It's different from giving an offering. Yeah. Fred Price came to Ghana. Is this from the... You see, look at how I spoiled my shirt with this. And my righteous now, it's now, it's now, it's now disturbing me. The real oil that should have been on me. So I look oily, but it's not the real oil. The real oil is here. <laughs> and the thing that I'm holding on to is decaying slowly, it's becoming more useless in my hand. Because what is a car? What is a house? What is the land? What is the money? The value is even changing. So, I remember one time Fred Price came to Ghana and uh, I learned how to preach from Fred Price. And I, I, know, I don't know where I was him. I was called that he wants to have lunch with me. Just a small lunch, three people, four people. So I said, oh, I was bored with them because he was originally supposed to come here. In fact, this year he was supposed to speak at, on, on Friday night here. And he just canceled it, even this year. But last year, or the year before, he was coming. And he was, it was all planning for him to come. And then suddenly I heard he was going somewhere else. And some people had organized. Different. So I heard of it. I said, oh, these kind of people and this kind of thing, they just cause problems. So I don't want to have anything to do with it. So I told Bishop Saki, look, I'm not going for this. No, I, I don't want any. Then the Lord spoke to me and said, this is the devil again at work. And this, this is what he said to me. Not to meet him or to have lunch. But when will you have a chance to sow a seed in his life to fulfill Galatians 6? 6. When? It's the only time you, you may have. Huh? Yeah? So I realized that it's a satanic thing. Because before God will give you something, he's also expecting you to do and most of the time, I find Satan coming against me to prevent me from doing those type of things. Because it's related to real anointing. So when God tells you, go and give, that's if God told you, you give. And I notice it is the most spiritual people who sow seeds in my life. The most spiritual ones of my pastors and seeds of a certain kind. Well, there are seeds you can see. This one is just, I mean, finding something to say that this is whatever. It is the, the more spiritual the person is, the more. When I met Benny Hinn, you know what I told Ben? I said, because you see, I'm in the healing ministry through Benny Hinn. You may not know. I mean, I don't talk about that aspect much. But when I met him, so all I said, 
is that I want to spend money on you. I don't know how to do it. I want to spend money. I told his, his guy, I, said, I want to spend money on Benihim. I want to give him money. I don't know how to give the money to him. And then he was telling me what to do. But that's all that I wanted to do. So, you know when he was coming to Ghana, that was, you see, although you're having a crusade, my project, <laughs> my chance was coming. The kind of money that I had organized to sow into his life and ministry. I know that God, God knows. If he never comes here, as far as I'm concerned, not that if he doesn't have to come here, but I mean, how to see the person is not easy to see. <laughs> you, you are not spiritual. That's why these things are. They don't mean anything to you. The more spiritual you are, the more these kind of things will mean something. Now, then God will say, the next level. Ah, you see that job you have? Come. Stand up. You are the, you are the paymaster. Come. You are from uh, stand here, stand over there, and then come to pay me every month. I'm in my house. Okay, wait, wait. I need to pray first. I need to pray. Oh, God. Oh, I want for the Holy Spirit. I want anointing. Thus says the Lord. See that job you have. Give up your job. I don't want a job. And I'll bless you. What you said? That's what I said. My job. Huh? Job, come. This is a job that comes every month. Ah, come. Three, 30 million. Ah, go back next month, come again. He keeps coming. Come back again next month. Come back, come back next month. This is my salary. It comes. To my, 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 my hospital, my job. Go back. Hmm. The salary is not bad at all. Come. Every time I get my salary, I'm so blessed. Hey, God said I shouldn't have this one again. Hey. No, I want to keep it. Come, increase it. Eh? Increase it from next month. Be coming continuously. No anointing. This one is a problem. That's why some people cannot be anointed. God said, leave that job. Leave it. It's related to the anointing. Huh? I don't like my message now. I don't like my message, you see. Offering, tithes, Galatians 6 6, giving the man of God, huh? Job. Then, even in the ministry, he can say to you, don't collect salary again. Because you can be in full time ministry guests and then everyone can say, don't take salary again. Wow. Believe me for offerings. Wow. Wow. Yeah, there are levels in the thing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> t- look, there are levels in everything you are doing. Yeah. You will be surprised. Yeah. Then maybe, you see, one day, I was lying down in my office. I've almost finished preaching there. Those of you who are tired. I was lying down in my office downstairs waiting for, for um, to come and preach at a miracle service. So I, I, was, I, I fell asleep for two seconds. And suddenly an angel came to the room with a, a tray. Where's the tray? Come. Just like that. A tray. And on the tray was a lamb skinned with only the white skin left. And the angel knelt down in front of him and said, what should I do with it? I said, what should you do with it? He said, will you eat it or I should should offer it to the Lord? I should burn it. I said, will I eat it or I should offer it to the Lord? It's a nice lamb I'm coming to eat. Supper. Or I should offer it to the Lord. I said, can I eat it? Something that can be offered to the Lord, I should eat it. Then I came out of it. At that time, the church was just about to provide something for me 
that is provided for everybody. And the Lord said, dash it to me. Don't let the church do anything like that for you. Ever. Till you die. It's finished. Give it to me. Something that everybody has. I said, Lord, I can't believe what you are saying. <laughs> do you like it or you like my anointing? God uses how you behave with money and with these things that are even unrighteous things to decide what to put on your life. That's what God uses. And he will use it all through your life. He will always watch what you do. So those of you who even are in a church and still, you are so far from the anointing. You don't, stealing, not even giving. <laughs> stealing. You take all. How many of you remember we are having a service? The ushers dropped 2,000 CDs here. I came to the 2,000 and I said, this money is very dangerous money. You should be afraid to use this money. It's God's money. See, if you are not afraid of God's money, you are not afraid of real things, God. Anointing. Huh? What do you think? Is it a good message? So there are more messages. You can go. So the little things. Little things. You can go through the little. How God will say this thing, this thing, this, this, this. And then things which are another man's. When we go into another man's, how you behave with another man's. Anything now, you never get anointing of your own, of your own like you actually anointed yourself. You can only operate under a certain cloud of anointing within the system in the momentum of the thing. But you yourself to be actually anointed. You know, brother, you can sit down. Thank you for your salary, your monthly salary, sir. I don't want a salary again. I don't want an offering. I don't want, I don't want your whatever. I want the anointing, the true riches. May God give me true riches. May you have true riches. May you, may you, may you be compliant and obedient. He's watching. You. It doesn't happen once. It happens over your life. God says, okay. Okay. With this. Trust me. I've been shocked in my life. I always thought that trusting was over when I entered full-time ministry. So uh, now I've done what nobody... Hey! <laughs> He'll say to you, give, give this. Give that. And it's the spirit that is saying, go, do it. Do it. And how God has faced me for the times, even it has happened, and I don't know why it happens that way. Each time I have to give to a man of God, when Bishop Duncan Williams was being, going to be ordained as an archbishop, the Lord said to me to go and give him a certain type of offering. Then the night I started to debate about it. Oh, why this? And then the Lord spoke to me about it. It. I said, this man, he has been there all the time for you. Whether he did the right thing that he wanted him to do or not, he was there. When we were digging this ground, he was there. When I was launching my book, Loyalty, he was there. When I was launching my first books, he was there. When my father died, he was the only pastor who stood over the coffin and prayed. When I was in need of a church, he was the one who was there. You may not count all these things. When even our crisis came, he was there. Even though he did not say what I thought he would say, he was still around. He was there. And if I was in his shoes, I would probably have done exactly what he did. And he's just been there. And I started to cry. Yeah. Forget not. You see, in Tina, some of you don't have, there's a certain grace. In favor is not on your life. There's a certain fruit you can never bear. Because unrighteous mama, when God gives you instructions, this, 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 it's always a whole case. It's a whole big issue. 
Oh, yes, he watches it. He watches it. You put the croissant in your hand and start to watch you. Say, how you behave. And then you start to freak out because of this bread. You start to freak out. Small money that he is giving you. How can you have true riches? Real anointing. When you look at anointed people and you see fruits, God has anointed me. I can preach and change people's professions. It's not by logical discussion. You will not understand how you are changing. It's true. You will not understand how you are changing. You will be changing. You see that. You will be living your. You will be living what is gold and diamond. It's an anointing. I said, no, nobody can follow you. Yeah. What people are dying for here, they have, they will be living it. You wonder, are they mad? <laughs> that was the anointing that Jesus had to make people leave their jobs, professions, and follow him. So, my friend, money, you said, I, I asked you to choose. You said, do you want to talk about little things, another man's things, or money? You chose money. And that's what I talked about. May he anoint you and bless you and touch your life. Stand to your feet. All right. Lift your hands. Some of us don't pay tithes. Some of us don't pay offerings. Some of us, God said to us to do things. We have struggled with God for years. Just obey the spirit. Just do flow with money. Money must not be a problem. Father, we thank you. We love you. And we praise you. What a difference you make in our lives. Father, today we pray for true riches, Lord. Something that's real. Lord, you showed me in the ministry. Building, building is not real. It's not, it's not a real work. The real work is the spiritual work. That goes on. You told me, Lord. You had mercy on me and you showed me. I pray for those that are here whose hands are lifted up. Show them also the truth, Lord, that they will not be deceived. Show them how money is not real money. It's not real riches, Lord. Show them greater things. Let them, oh God, see something higher and go for something greater, something better. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.